Hello, everyone, and welcome to the first installment of Equal Investors Market Recap. Today is Sunday, March 22nd, and in this uh, market recap, we're going to go over coronavirus updates, go over the current uh, VIX trend, as well as go into what we're watching in the overall markets as well. From there, we're going to some trades we recently made this week and look into specific uh, patterns between assets as well, specifically looking uh, between the relationship between uh, equities and gold and the relationships between equities and bonds as well. Now, to start off uh, with some coronavirus updates, we see coronavirus cases crossing 340,000. And we're seeing more tests coming out of Europe and the United States as well currently. Within the United States, we uh, actually today we saw cases jump over 15,000. And at the time of recording, it's only 3 p.m. So we can see a gra uh, gradual increase as well from here as the number of testing units has increased in the United States and Europe. So we're able to get better data as well. In terms of the markets, the SPY was down 8% this week. And uh, over the month, it's been down 30%. And in terms of uh, estimates that are coming out for specific companies, we're seeing a lot of uncertainty as companies are not sure how it's going to end, how much it's going to impact them. And we're still not sure when we're going to be back to the new normal. We're also seeing increasing bailout demand between uh, in uh, specific industries. So if you're looking into oil and gas, there's bailout demand in more of the high yield markets. Um, you're seeing these smaller oil and gas companies getting hit significantly since oil, uh, uh, oil is actually trading at around 24 gallons a barrel, which is hard to sustain for many of these uh, big oil, big and small oil companies. And some of these small oil companies are running bankruptcy risk if this continues as the cost for producing oil is just too high. So we'll have to see there's a supply side issue and a demand side issue. Around 70% of um, oil's demand comes from transportation. And you're seeing much more transportation as a result of the virus. And also on the supply side issue, you're seeing um, a pump within Russia and Saudi Arabia as they're uh, currently producing much more oil than they were before. Some other industries to look into for bailout demand include looking into the restaurant industry, looking into as well as looking into uh, larger like casino industries because they've been hit hard. A lot of them have been shut down, specifically looking into Las Vegas Sands and Wynn Resorts. I've been looking into um, retail, com uh, retail companies. Um, one that I'm going to mention within the trade recap is Burlington. Uh, some other ones that I'm looking into is Macy's. They announced that they're closing all their sh stores. And um, other industries where, where you'll see bailout demand include the airline industry. This is one of the first ones that ha that were referenced. You're, you're seeing um, uh, Trump himself say that he's going to look for industries where the, there are the most workers. He specifically referenced um, Boeing and other airlines. So we could see a potential bailout there. Um, and with so many industries needing a potential ba bailout, that's, uh, that's something we're currently tracking. There could be a large ups upswing. Um, some, uh, another industry I didn't mention was the cruise line industry. So you're seeing um, potential efforts being put within the cruise line industry. Of, there's large bankruptcy risk with some of these companies as they're over leveraged. And you could see um, some of these uh, over leveraged companies potentially go bankrupt. Um, here at Eagle Investors, we're looking at a lot of over leveraged companies with uh, the current VIX situation. So going into the VIX situation, uh, real quick, I just wanted to pull up um, uh, TD, uh, TD's Thinkorswim platform and show um, so, uh, some of the pricing for SPY puts currently. So here you can see the implied volatility each week 
it's the current implied volatility for um, the March uh, March expirations are very high. We're seeing 109, 105, and 98. So you're seeing a lot of volatility expected in the upcoming weeks, uh, according to the options chain. So here you can see um, an another thing I wanted to pull up is is how um, currently spies at historical levels um of volatility and you could see from here you can see me more traders being more uh, trying to hedge themselves with spy plus um and, and this is signal is signaling uh, almost a panic in the markets and uh, what we're going to go into now is looking into how it's impacting uh, how the how the relationship between equities and other assets have been so right now you've seen a large drawdown in equities that are considered safe havens usually such as bonds and uh, uh commodities such as gold as well so with gold uh you saw a large drawdown from the 1700 price level to currently 1500s currently we could see with I personally think that if we see, we won't see a bottom until the number of coronavirus cases stabilize within Europe and the United States, and that could take a couple months. And since you're seeing large liquidation, panic selling, with uh, people getting margin calls, you're seeing institutions sell their hedges as well as they sell their uh, current equity positions. As a result of that, you can see expect a larger down, uh, downturn with gold as well. I believe the key technical level to look look for for here is around the 1350 level. Another um, a trend with dysfunctional markets is um, the current bond equity relationship. As you're seeing equities go down, you're seeing bonds go down as well. And the only current safe haven that we're we're seeing at this point is cash. Cash is king. So um, you're seeing ca I cash. Uh, a lot of investors put money into the uh, dollar, and as a result, you've seen the DXY improve. As a result, and some uh, investors are talking about a potential change in the overall bond and equity relationship as a whole. Uh, over the past 20 years, we were in what represented a deflationary era. Now we might go into an inflationary era, and as a result of that, we could see the bond relation, bond equity relationship, change to a direct relationship, and this could mean a significant change within the loan gay portfolios. Currently, you're seeing a lot of financial advisors uh, have the 60/40 approach, so 60% equity and 40% bond. But if we see the direct relationship between bonds and equities, we could potentially see a change in that pattern in the future. Now, in terms of looking into the VIX, uh, VIX futures curve, the VIX futures curve is currently in backwardation. And um, just to give a quick reader's digest of what, uh, what um, one of the previous videos that um, here, it's currently on the Eagle Investors YouTube channel was with the former uh, CBOE market maker, uh, David Lincoln. And it was a great call. We went over uh, current VIX structure as well as some products such as TVIX and VIX and how it's important to understand what's, what, what the components are within them as well. So just to give a quick rundown, 80% of the time the VIX is in uh, contango and 20% of the time the VIX is in backwardation and currently the VIX futures curve is showing a backwardation and essentially um, what this means for the trades that we're looking into we're looking into more high beta plays to short as a result of backwardation being a, a bearish sign for the market. Now going into some of the mo more successful trades for this week I wanted to go into TVIX as well as Burlington and Wind Resort. So TVIX, just to go into like its specific components, 
if you pull up Big Central, you can see the first month of March and second month of April. Uh, the uh, TVX represents the average of the first and second month in terms of the pricing. And um, TVX has performed very well over the past couple of weeks. I personally have held it as a hedge. And um, the important thing about products like TVX and UVXY is they're primarily meant for day traders. They're not meant for a long term hold as it's very easy to get burned on. So having tight stop losses as well as having uh, trying to cap your gains as well is essential when you're trading these products. Another uh, trade we made was uh, Burlington. Um, in, uh, in terms of the investment thesis that I had is um, it's a high beta name. The company is currently very over leveraged. So we're seeing um, potential for bankruptcy risk as well within, the, uh, within retail. So that could mean lower sales, of potential closing down of stores as well. And in-store sales represent over 99% of Burlington sales. So we thought this was a great place to place put them. And in terms of other high beta over leverage names, um, we're, we're looking into um, specific industries. So um, we've been looking into the oil and gas industry. We've been looking into regional banks as well. Um, uh, there's also some specific plays that we we had uh, we have open such as wind resorts. We uh, we think that these companies have short opportunity as their current operations are being closed, and we believe they can't sustain it as a result of them over leveraging at such a high level. Now, thank you for listening. This is the our first market recap. So if you have any um, other questions or things that you want to be brought up in future market recaps, please leave that in the comments below. And thank you. And once again, uh, please feel free to check out Eagle's, uh, Eagle Investors site and join our Discord server.